Time to get the stable woke up. We gotta go to work. This horse needs a drink. The dust is thick on this thing. We are unbelievably dry here. Everything is dusty. No time to mess around this morning. We're going. We've got a 252 acre piece that's about five miles north of the farm. We're gonna run up there and hopefully knock that out this weekend. That is the main goal. We're moving, we're boogieing. And if you watched the last video, an update on Isla. She had surgery at one o'clock in the morning last night. Um, her elbow was completely dislocated and broken. There were no bones hanging onto her elbow anymore. Um, they did surgery, actually went pretty quick, went well. She's got three stainless steel pins in her elbow, but she's got her stock OEM elbow. Uh, it's just being held together by pins and she should get home today. And I believe she's on some relatively strong pain medication, so she's probably not coming to visit today. But we'll see. Hopefully. Every little girl is entitled to a combine ride and some ice cream after a situation like that. Look at that throwback. Man, I wish I could pull in there and park this thing next to that 45. Got a lot of respect for that old stuff that got us to where we are today. There's a lot of trees in this area too. Look at that view right there. That's the thing that poems are made out of. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village though. I'll spare you guys the rest. Menu, holding, unlock, open. That's fully opened, corn head, unfolding. There we go. We are all set to go here now, just for the uh, little trick here. Yep, 10-4, looks like there's a load on there. I'm not sure if the camera does it justice or not, but I think I put this hill on camera every time I'm up here. This is what we call our hilly field, but the views are awesome and it's a big field. The hills are so big, we really don't mind dealing with the hills because well, they're so big that they're not that big of a problem. Looks like I found a couple of hitchhikers here that got dropped off. Hey bud, happy hey. birthday. Thanks. What's it like to be so old? <laughs> what about you, Rhiannon? What do you think of your elderly brother now? Mm. Hmm. Well, that was a fun little visit. They're concerned about their baby sister. And it's Onyx's birthday, so our friends, who also have kids that are friends with them, are taking them over to the mini golf and go-kart racing place so thank you to those guys for that i'm not i won't name them they don't want to be named but thank you guys i think i figured something out this little hole down here next to the window that i wasn't sure what that was for it's a garbage that's handy i like it the whole thing lifts right out it's a good idea i was confused by it I also take back everything I said about the fridge being unnecessary. The fridge is sweet. For those that have been around at least since last fall, this is the side hill where the fertilizer spreader tipped over on its side. So Jim and I are gonna dump right here just to make sure I'm empty before things get really uncomfortable. I know long before we owned this land, I had heard a couple stories about anhydrous tanks tipping over back here as well. We've actually talked about looking into putting it into some kind of a program so that we wouldn't be farming this back corner. There's not that many acres back here. It's good dirt, but it's steep. Maybe that's a better view. Not sure if you can really get a, a feel for how steep it really is back here. This is a cool deal I learned about earlier today, but as I go up and down these hills, the cleaning fan, the chaffer, and the sieves will all adjust themselves to try to prevent losses out the back. It doesn't make these hills any more comfortable for the operator though. For anybody who's ever driven a combine nose down on a steep hill, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know what's going on here. It's done it to me three times in one short round. I do know what happened here, but we won't talk about that. But this is frustrating. I've also had more 
more rows plug up on the ends and you can't hear the slip clutches at all it's honestly so quiet in that cab there's no slip clutch noise when you plug a row so you go until you see it but this this is maddening it doesn't even clean off there it's like the cleaning fan is coming forward so fast it won't even feed that in I don't know if it's all just fluff that won't feed in I can't even see if everything's moving right maybe we'll clean this off a bit and it'll help some let's see without me falling on my face these are kind of handy to prevent you know spilling yourself onto the ground what is the deal I'm gonna run it now that the feeder house is cleaned off and see if that helps but Obviously, there's just a lot of really fluffy plant material building up in there. Kind of like the issue I was having before, but when we flattened out the head and ran it at a faster speed, it seemed to do pretty well. Yeah, we're running it fast. Deck plates are fine. That sample's been pretty doggone good, though. I've honestly never run a machine that gets such few amount of cob in the tank. It's, it's clean. You can see there's a little bit of plant material in there to be expected. Honestly, some cob is to be expected too, but it's not in there with this machine, at least the way we've got it set. I don't know if I'd be able to set it well enough, but the guy that came out and helped me with it sure did. I'm struggling to keep the dust off the windows and the mirrors though. That's proven to be an issue. And I'm still getting leaves floating there, but I've slowed down a little bit. I've gone from five and a half down to five. And I did turn my fan speed down 100 RPM, so we'll see what that does. So far, the tank has stayed pretty, pretty dang clean. We'll see, it seems to be helping. I'm wondering, because every time it was building up on the head, I was going downhill. I'm wondering if the cleaning fan was speeding up going downhill and it was feeding out through the feeder house enough to cause that bunching right on the ends, because that's what it would do it, right on the end. So when there's not material, feeding in to keep things moving it was coming forward and building up that is my hypothesis I'm gonna swap out with dad here he's gonna take the combine while I go back and visit Isla cuz she just got home from the hospital so dad needs to visit her for sure very nice Yeah. keep it under a hundred under a hundred under a hundred I'll probably keep it under seven yeah probably fun without me. Time to climb a couple of bins and go see my little girl and celebrate Onyx's birthday. It's so noisy here. Check the wet bin first. See how full we are. We still haven't gotten up to our, our, our I forget what it's called, the deal that flips to let me know when it's close to full. The grain gauge, that's what it is. One of you sent me that. So thank you to whoever that is. I haven't used it yet. Time to go see the kids. What have you been doing, huh? Huh, you been working? You're just wasting time. Hi, you want me to come take the combine back over or should I take the Mendeco out? I'm going vertical tillaging. Mendecoing, VTing, tilling. I'm going in a tractor. Ah, the 8360. I like this piece. We've still got the Mendeco Storm out here. This is the exact same unit that we ran this spring. We really, really liked it. I'll be honest with you, there's only one thing that I didn't like about it. That's the fact that, I gotta turn the, uh, turn the fan down. How do I turn that down? There we go. Too many tractors, I can't keep it straight. The fact that it would leave tracks sometimes on the mainframe tires of the unit. So it's so heavy, it would leave like compaction tracks. And we had a really dry spring. Um, but we, overall, we really, really like this thing. We're gonna run it a bunch this fall. Don't know if it'll be around next spring or not, but thank you to Mendeco for letting us run this thing. We're definitely gonna run it this fall, see what it does, cause it does a really good job. I like the adjustability of it, going from zero to 14 degrees and having the adjustability in the back. Uh, it's got a couple, couple rows of harrows it's got the baskets 
it's got a lot of adjustability. I haven't run this machine yet this year, so... Uh, oh, the RT almost killed me coming in the field approach. Let's see what this thing does. The idea behind this thing, this VT tool, vertical tillage tool, is to not tear the ground up so much, not flip the dirt over, leave more residue on top to do a couple different things. Um, well, I guess we'll test it against some rocks. The RT just about killed me again. Uh, that was a big buried rock that I ran over there. Uh, it wasn't a cliff I went off. So the idea of this thing being that we want to leave some residue on top to prevent wind erosion and we don't want to till quite as deep. It's not as good for the soil to till super deep, um, but we have reasons for doing it out here. We want to test this machine in the fall here and see what happens in the spring. We did it with a uh, with the John Deere VT last year and it worked really well this spring to work it up with this thing. So we're going to test this thing as well. It gets tillage done quickly because you can drive fast. I'm already, I'm already here. Before I go too far, I want to go out and inspect the job that it's doing. Check for depth and, and how level the field is, the residue on top, just see overall what kind of job I'm doing. Here in the dark, you can hardly even tell because we're trying to leave the residue on top, but there's the line right there. So you can see we're just chopping up the stalks, stirring up the top of the soil so that hopefully it dries in the spring, chews up the residue, mats it down to get it to uh, deteriorate some so that the microbes in the soil can go to work on it. One of the things I want to do is leave the root balls of the corn in the ground. I want the root balls in the ground. That's better for them to stay in the ground. And so I'm looking for that. I've got a few that I'm digging up here. Overall, it doesn't look like many. It's kind of dark, hard to tell. Depth of the machine is pretty good because I don't want to go real deep. I like it. On both sides or just the left? What's it doing in the middle now? Is it still bunching up the leaves? Yeah, I'll let Eric know. He can take a look at those outside rows then in the morning when he's out there. Sounds like Dad's having some of the same issues that I was. He's plugging some rows, particularly the far outside left one. He's plugging up and he's bunching the leaves up in the center even with the fan turned down. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to uh, Midwest Machinery. They are going to come out there and check a couple other things in the morning anyway. So, we'll see what they say about that. Talk to the guys at Deer and see if there's a setting I'm missing or something. But, one of those issues. I'm going to turn down the... I'm gonna turn down the dryer because we got really dry corn coming in now. We're down to 16 and a half percent, which is the driest corn I've seen in it's like the corn's dry. I gotta turn the dryer down even more, which is crazy. We're running only the top burner, one burner on a low temp instead of two burners on a high temp. We're pushing it through as fast as we possibly can. And that X9, as fast as it's eating corn and as fast as the trucks are coming in here, we're not catching, I mean, we are catching the wet bin, but not very quickly. Anyway, the trucks are all coming home. Dad's coming home, Combine's gonna park for a night. Stepped in a hole, almost went over. Could have taken you guys down with me. Just pulled a sample of corn out of the back of the dryer. Wanna see something cool? New moisture tester, how's about that? Processing, sampling, testing. Where are we at? Perfect. It's the all new Millennial Mode Moisture Tester. <laughs> That's it, I'm out. Thank you guys for watching, appreciate it. Keep it between the rows. Don't forget to check out the GoFundMe link down below and help us donate to uh, Grain Bin safety equipment and rescue equipment for fire departments and first responders. We're not asking anything in return, um, but if you like the content, you like what you see here, share it with your friends, tell people, subscribe. Only half of you are subscribed, that's just really sad. There's no reason we can't get this channel to 
82 Brazilian subscribers by the end of October. Okay, peace. Peace? I said peace. I don't know why. Good night.